Hi there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dutch AC channel and this is my show and tell of the content of this small little box. In this box you've got a UB XV130, so a 130 sized FPV quadcopter, a brushless quadcopter at that. So yeah, uh, this is uh, one of the smaller brushless FPV quadcopters I think and I had been uh, looking for a nice small FPV quadcopter for quite a while and uh, so I uh, decided to try this one out. Before I say anything else I should mention that this one is uh, on offer at the moment at uh, Banggood and uh, there will be a link in the description of course to this uh, quadcopter. Um, I've already done two videos on it, two flight videos, one on 3S and one on 4S and yeah I, I Sure, I liked the way it flies very much. And in this uh, video here I'll show you the technical details of this uh, quadcopter, how it's built up and such, and what comes with the quadcopter. Alright, and this is what our little quadcopter looks like when you take it out of the box. Uh, well, not completely actually. This uh, black and white striping on the back propellers I've done myself with a magic marker. Uh, the quadcopter comes with eight white propellers, four blades, three inch and uh, yes they are bull noses so they provide a good amount of power but they aren't very efficient. Um, yeah I can understand why they used bull noses because of this uh, canopy you aren't left with a lot of space for larger propellers. I've heard a few people complain about these propellers, uh, weird noise, um, huh. Uh, they are alright for me, um, I had no complaints about them really. I think the quadcopter looks very nice with this uh, canopy. Um, there is one elephant in the room however I should mention. It looks a lot like the Rotor X Atom 2. Yeah, uh, especially the canopy looks a lot like it. Uh, the frame layout as well, it's a uh, dead cat spider like frame layout. That looks quite a lot like the Atom 2 as well. Is it a clone however? I don't think so. Especially the electronics are completely different. Uh, the Atom 2 has a thicker frame. Um, I'll show you the details on the arms and such uh, in a minute as well. Yeah, it does look a lot like it. However, the Atom 2 is far more expensive. Actually beyond my budget, this is a far more inexpensive quadcopter. So uh, yeah, uh, so that's the, the elephant in room. Um, let's see, yeah it comes with this uh, unbreakable style of aerial for your FPV signal. I would have liked a slightly smaller one but uh, this one worked out well for me so far. Obviously with a, a non-circular polarized antenna like this uh, your range will suffer a little. Uh, how far are you going to fly away with a little quadcopter like this though? Uh, but uh, yeah, you should be aware that the range is uh, less with a aerial like this. Of course you can replace it with a circular polarized antenna. Now uh, the canopy here uh, is held on by two screws over here and uh, the quadcopter at least from Banggood actually comes with two extra canopies. A uh, black one and a grey one, as you can see I've not used them uh, thus far, but I do appreciate that it comes with these two alternate canopies. And yeah, the canopies all say uh, awesome on them, um, I'm not sure, they, uh, I, they shouldn't have done that I think. Anything else, maybe uh, just the XV130, Awesome is a bit uh, cheapish. Uh, the quadcopter deserves better than that, I think. The quadcopter also comes with two receiver cables, one PPM and one SBUS cable, and two strips. One of the strips is already on my quadcopter. And as mentioned before, you get a full set of spare propellers. Uh, as you can see, I have not busted up one of the propellers. I've done about uh, 15 flights with the quadcopter thus far. And uh, yeah, it's still in one piece. I have had very severe crashes with it, but uh, yeah, my propellers and my quadcopter are still in uh, one piece. Uh, maybe I was a bit lucky and I was flying over a grass field, so that, that helped. 
Okay, back to the quadcopter itself. Let me uh, take off the canopy and show you the internals of it. All right, here we have the frame minus the canopy and minus the propellers. Um, as you can see, I have a very, very small receiver over here. Um, it is a Futaba fast protocol receiver though. But I'll have a link to this one uh, in the description as well, as it is the smallest receiver I've come across. With diversity, that is. As you can see, two antenna. And um, okay, the frame itself. Uh, very small, a little brushless motors. Pretty high KV, obviously, with these uh, small propellers. They do have self locking prop nuts. I'm not a fan of those. It does work, but yeah, if you lose one of the counter rotating uh, prop nuts, uh, you're uh, in a bind, so to speak. So I would have uh, preferred uh, uh, nylon locking nuts with uh, all the threads the, the, the right way around. Um, these arms, as mentioned, are pretty thin. I think they are just over two millimeters. And um, it'll be pretty hard to see, but the motor wires are actually recessed into the frame, into the arms. So they've uh, cut a little groove in the arms uh, which the motor wires sit into, uh, which makes the arms even thinner at that at those spots, which does lead to a bit of flex to the arms. Um, on 3S that's not a problem, on 4S you occasionally have prop strikes. I'm not sure if it's visible, but uh, you've got some scuff marks over here and over here. That's where the prop hit the canopy and I have actually had one pretty bad crash because of those uh, prop strikes. Um, I'll do a separate small video on how to uh, address that flex. It's uh, mostly the flex in the rear arms. The front props don't strike the canopy. So again I'll do a short little video uh, on how to uh, address that. And um, yeah it has a, uh, a small little camera of course. It's a small quadcopter. It is a 600 TVL I think. Uh, CMOS camera, yeah, you can't expect a lot from such a small camera, but it's flyable. Um, it's not as nice as uh, your uh, new run cams or uh, other, uh, like an HS1177, but uh, in daylight it's a uh, pretty reasonable camera. And in the middle of the frame we have a, a stack of two layers. The bottom one is a 4-in-1 speed controller, a BL Heli S. I have not changed the firmware or even had a look at the parameters of these uh, uh, ESCs really. Uh, they work out just fine uh, as they are for me. And uh, on top of that you've got a combined flight controller with your VTX, which actually has a display over here. Yeah, you can't access that with the canopy on, uh, as goes for the USB connector on the side over here with the canopy on, you can't access that. Or you should cut a little uh, slot into the canopy over here. Um, yeah, you could also uh, opt to uh, do your uh, uh, setup without the canopy on it, of course. And at the rear, you've got an XT30 connector. So a smaller version of the XT60, which is more common in quadcopter land. Yeah, it is a uh, small little quadcopter. Uh, and I just uh, took a couple of uh, lipos and soldered on an XT30. I tried the quadcopter on 3S once and after that I only flown, I've only flown it on 4S. A 750 milliamp 4S. The quadcopter seemed pretty happy with that. Okay, let me actually uh, take off the flight controller. Uh, it's held on with uh, two nylon nuts and two nylon standoffs. Okay, as you can see you can then lift off the flight controller. There you go. 
And uh, the only reason I'm showing you this is uh, to show you that there is actually a buzzer solder point over here. The quadcopter doesn't come with a buzzer right out of the box, but it uh, is very handy to have a buzzer, of course. And there is an easily accessible solder point over there. Okay, what more can I tell you about this quadcopter? Uh, yeah, the camera angle is uh, non-adjustable. Um, I'd say it has an angle of around 30 degrees, which is uh, pretty okay for most pilots, I think. Um, the VTX can be switched in between 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. And uh, the battery goes onto the bottom, as you can see. Battery strap. I've seen a few people uh, that uh, struggled <laughs> to adjust, uh, to uh, install the battery strap. But uh, if you have trouble installing it, you can simply take off the entire uh, electronic stack. Uh, not complicated to do so. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, I didn't. I just uh, took a little uh, more time and uh, that was okay. Okay, and I'm flying this quadcopter on SBUS. And I'll show you right now what the configuration in clean flight looks like for that. All right, for the SBUS setup, you first want to go to the ports page in clean flight and uh, set up your uh, third UART as your uh, serial RX, as I've done uh, here. And in the receiver tab, you uh, obviously select SBUS. And uh, for me that was uh, it, that uh, worked out just fine. And the only other thing I changed in the parameters of this quadcopter was the minimum throttle. I set that to, to uh, uh, 1030. That worked out uh, pretty well for me. Obviously I've changed the flight modes to my liking, but that's a personal thing. And that's basically it. Um, if you have uh, any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Again, I'll do a short little, little video on how to get rid of the flex in the rear arms. Uh, that'll be up in the coming days. Uh, for now, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in and hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye.